Hello again, we're back. We're going to be doing some examples where we're solving one step linear equations. And I've got a couple examples up here. One involves addition, one involves subtraction. We're going to do a multiplication, we're going to do a division one as well. And we're going to see how that goes, although I don't think it's going to be too bad. So I've got this equation right here, x plus 7 equals 4. I've got this teeter-totter that I was talking about a balanced teeter-totter. x plus 7 is on one side, 4 is on the other side, they're balanced, they're having fun, but there's something that I have to do in this particular equation. I know what 7 is, I know what 4 is, I don't know what x is. I have to try to figure out what the value for x is. Now in order to do that, I have to get x by itself, or I have to get the variable in an equation by itself. So I have x plus 7 equals 4. Now do I really have x by itself? And the answer is no, because I have a positive 7 with the x. Now, I want to get rid of this positive 7, and I just want x to be by itself. Well, how do I get rid of a plus 7? I take its inverse operation. I subtract it. And it's fantastic. The 7 will go away. 7 subtracted by 7 cancels out. But the problem is, if I subtract 7, on one side of an equation without doing it on the other, the equation becomes unbalanced. What I do on one side, I have to make sure that I always do on the other. So if I subtract 7 from this side of the equation, and by the way, the equation is separated by an equal sign. If I subtract 7 on this side, woo, you know, my teeter-totter is teetering. I want it level. I've got to do it on the same side. So I'm going to do it on this side. If I subtract 7, subtract 7 over here, and here's what I have left. I have x equals, and then I've got 4 subtracted by 7, or 4 plus negative 7, which comes out to negative 3. Now, if you don't believe that's correct, substitute the value in for x to see if it's true. Is negative 3 plus 7 4? Well, what's negative 3 plus 7? 4. Is 4 equal to 4? story checks out. It's right. In fact, a lot of students don't like checking their answers once they figure it out because they automatically they assume they do it correctly. But if you have extra time on a quiz or a test and you want to get, make sure that you get a perfect score, you want to make sure you got the highest score possible, it doesn't hurt to check. I'm not going to say check on everything. Finish the problem first and then go back and check your answers. That's what your teacher means when they say finish your problems then go back and check your answers. Make sure the answer makes sense. Well, I finished x plus 7 equals 4. Let's do another one. This time we have x subtracted by 12 equals 3. Again, I've got a couple objectives. One, keep the equation balanced. Two, solve for x. Figure out what x is. And when I have an equal sign, it means that I've got to figure something out. And that something is usually the variable. In this case, it is. So I have x subtracted by 12 equals 3. x is not by itself. It's got a negative 12 with it. I want to get rid of the negative 12. How do I get rid of a negative 12? I add 12. So I add 12 to this side of the equation, uh, to this side of the teeter-totter. But what I do on one side, I better do on the other. So if I add 12 over here, I better add 12 over here. Negative 12 plus 12 cancels, and I've got x equals 15. Check it out. Make sure the story rings true. I've got 15, subtract 12. What's 15 subtract 12? 3. 3 does equal 3. Story checks out. So we did a problem where you subtracted on both sides to figure out an x value or a variable, and we added on both sides to see if you can figure out an x value. You also have to do problems with division, and multiplication. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a problem with division. Don't worry, it's not that difficult. And then we're going to do problems with multiplication, which actually, in my opinion, are slightly more difficult than the division ones. But we'll see how it goes. Let me erase these really quickly and then write them down the next example. You can pause if you want to recheck these, or you can just slightly fast forward. My next example reads negative 6x, excuse me, negative 6 times x 
equals 48. Again, the x is not by itself. Now, I have some students who would add 6 to both sides and they say, oh, x equals 54. That's not correct. It's negative 6 times x. How do you get rid of multiplication? You divide. Now, I have to divide the number that's with x. And in this case, it's not just a 6, it's a negative 6. The negative will cancel out the negative, the 6 will cancel out the 6, and all I'll be left with is an x. But what I do on one side of the equation, I better do on the other side of the equation. So I divide 48 by negative 6. Positive divided by a negative is a negative, and 48 divided by 6 is 8. That's the answer. Now, if you don't believe me, check it out. Always check if you're in denial. Check it. See if it works. So I have negative 6 times, what was my x value? Negative 8. Does it equal 48? A negative times a negative is positive. 6 times 8, 48. And 48 does equal 48. So that story checks out too. Let's try a different one though. x divided by 4 equals 5. What number divided by 4 equals 5? Now some of you out there might say, oh, I know the answer, it's 20. Well, let me show you a couple different ways to do this. I'm going to show you a way that students tend to like better, and then another way that uh, many students don't like better. I like it, but I generally teach it the way that students tend to figure out problems easier. So here's one way to do it. You want to get the x by itself and it's x divided by 4. Well, how do you get rid of a divided by 4? You multiply by 4. But what you do on one side of the equation, you better do on the other side of the equation. 4 divided by 4 cancels, and you have x equals 5 times 4 is 20. If you don't believe me, substitute it in. 20 divided by 4 is 5. Is that true? Is 20 divided by 4 5? Well, yes, this is 5, and 5 equals 5. But for some reason, students don't appreciate that method. They think that it's a little bit more difficult than it has to be. So I end up showing this method too. And it's another way to solve the same type of problem. In fact, when I start doing these problems more often, I'm only going to solve it this second way. I just want to show you this way just in case you end up wanting to do it. But the way that I would show my students, because they tend to find it more friendly, is like this. You have x divided by 4 equals 5. You want to solve for x. It's very simple. Students like this because it reminds them of some procedures that they did in elementary school. Put a 1 over the other fraction. I've got one fraction equaling another. When you see a problem like that, you just cross multiply. Or use the cross product property, but we just say cross multiply. x times 1 is 1x, one or x equals 4 times 5 is 20. You receive the same answer, x equals 20, x equals 20, but you use cross multiplication or the cross product property instead of multiplying by 4 on both sides. And for some reason, students like that a lot more. They just do, for the most part, from what I've seen. I've got one more example for you. It's similar to this type, except there is an extra step added to it, and hopefully you'll be able to do it. We'll see. Let me erase this example, though, while I leave this one up to see the difference. Negative 2 over 7x, or negative 2 sevenths times x equals 4. I want to figure out what my x value is. Here's how I would just show my students really quickly. But I would rewrite it. First of all, if an x is in the middle, it just means it belongs on the top. If anything's in the middle, it belongs on the top. Negative 2x over 7 equals 4 over 1. Cross multiply. Negative 2x times 1 is negative 2x. 
equals 7 times 4 is 28. I'm going to take time really quickly to explain something here. Students get from this step to two steps later without showing their work. I would advise you not to do that. Show that step. Multiply it out. There's a reason why. When students multiply, they think they can multiply and divide at the same time, and they end up getting the problem wrong, and they write something that isn't remotely correct, and then they wonder why they get it wrong in the test. It's because they didn't take the five seconds to show it on the test. And before you say you don't believe me on that, I sit there and I say, if I'm walking around watching students take a test, I say, excuse me, don't skip that step. And all of a sudden, the problem they were about to get wrong, they get correct because they took the time to write out this step. They took the time. I have students who just want to just divide by two and say, oh, you know, uh, 20. No, they get it wrong. Show the step. Negative 2x times 1 is 2x. 7 times 4 is 28. Don't neglect that step. Don't. Negative 2x equals 28. And don't forget your equals in between there. Don't neglect it. Because you will probably end up getting it wrong if you neglect it. Don't do that. So I have negative 2 times x equals 28. How do I get rid of a multiplication in between a coefficient and a variable? I have to divide. Now, I can divide 2, but I won't get rid of the negative. So I have to divide by negative 2. But what I do on one side, I do on the other side. Negatives cancel, 2's cancel, I'm left with x. Like I said, don't neglect the step. Because I get things from students that I know why they got the answer, but it's not correct. Because they decided not to take that step. Equals positive divided by a negative is a negative, and 28 divided by 2 is 14. So that's a brief introduction of one set steps with division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. Something for you to think about. I want to do this problem one more time though, but I want to use the reciprocal property. Although I really do like cross multiplication because it's more consistent and students generally want to do it one way. But for the sake of just showing you, I'm going to show you. I'm going to do the same problem, negative 2 sevenths times x equals 4. Except I'm not going to beat around the bush and tell you that. It's in the middle, so put it on the top. I'm just going to write that step right there. There is another way to get x by itself. What you can do is you can multiply negative 2 over 7 by its reciprocal. And what I mean by reciprocal is the fraction just flipped. So if you do that, that's another way to solve it. So multiply by 7 over negative 2. That's called the reciprocal property of multiplication. But what you do on one side of the equation, you better do on the other. 7's cancel. Negatives cancel, 2's cancel, and I'm left with x equals 4 over 1 times 7 over negative 2. That's 4 times 7 is 28, 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, x equals negative 14. Same answer, different kind of approach. Uh, like I said, most students prefer this in the long run. I do have students who like the reciprocal property too, which is still why I show it. But when I end up teaching concepts later on, especially when you see these problems again, I'm just going to cross multiply them. That's how I like to do it. Okay. With that said, that's it for solving linear equations one step. I hope this wasn't too difficult. In fact, I think this is the meat and potatoes of math, and we're going to get to some really fascinating concepts. Other than that, I hope it makes sense. Have a great day.